you know, I already said my handwriting is terrible. So, you know, so my graph will look better if I use a TI Inspire, but even then I'll be bold enough to draw uh, what, the, what the sign graph should look like. So we all know that is going to be one and that's going to be negative one if, my, if it's a parent sign graph, okay? Sine X. And if the question is something like this, solve or find the solutions of sine X is equal to, let's say 0 0.75. Okay. Now, some of you will say, oh, why do we need to use the graph? We can just use, um, you know, the, the inverse trig operation and just say, you know, well, let X has to be equal to sine inverse of uh, 0 0.75. Yeah, that's correct. You are absolutely right. We can do that. That is only because I've used a very simple graph. I, I'm, 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 I'm uh, for the example, I'm using a very simple graph. Okay. Uh, what if the question was something a bit more complicated? Something it was like sine 3x minus 2 cos 4x is equal to 3 by 2. Now, that the question is solved. The same, so this is just an extension, but the same idea that you'd use in the simple example using sliders, we can use the same idea here in an equation like this. Okay? So that's my objective. I'm using, I'm trying to show you, this option is not wrong, by the way, which, you know, that X is equal to the sine inverse, the option is not wrong, but I'm trying to emphasize the use of the slider in more complicated uh, equations. So let's start with the simpler, and maybe then we can take a look at this one, <clears throat> and then let's take a look at one question, and then hopefully let's start with the paper six, okay? So I wanna go slow, uh, but making sure that you understand how to use the sliders, and then we can take a look at how, uh, how all of that uh, can be done. I look at this uh, uh, charts and I'm wondering whether anything is for me, but anyway. <clears throat> All right. So uh, this is one way to do it, okay, the sine inverse, but I'm just going to show you, illustrate to you how the sine, uh, how the same thing can be done with uh, uh, 0.75, uh, sine x is equal to 0, 0 0.75. Or if the question was a bit more general, okay, let's just do it for the particular case first, okay? So I'm going to use, jump straight to my non cast TI inspire and show the whole thing to you again. All right. So this is my simple question, sine x is equal to 0 0.75, okay? So let's jump to that uh, TI Inspire. I'll uh, share that. This is the non-cast version. And so we look at the graph page. <clears throat> last time, if you recall from last time's uh, webinar, I said before we even graph, you know, even if it's in degree, just change the window settings first, okay? Change the window settings. So the, you know, uh, if you forget, always go to the menu and where it says window zoom, you can go to window zoom. Uh, and there you can change the window settings from negative 360 to 360. Hit tab to go to the next field. That's 360 to 360, negative 360. And then you can keep the scale to something friendly. I like 30 degrees to be friendly. It's a lot more friendly than some other number. And let's keep the Y min and the Y max from negative two to two. And here we'll keep uh, the friendly number one. And I think that grid is good enough, okay? Um, now when we type in sine X, go to, uh, sign uh, trig sign x and you'll see the nice graph okay so i'll just put this aside um the the idea of the slider now remember i said the <clears throat> 0 0.75 will get example equally you could have just put a uh, tab uh entered another function and said put the number 0 0.75 and wherever it intersects are the solutions that's the meaning of solution of you know sine x is equal to wherever it intersects is a solution okay Everyone all right? Let's twist this question slightly. Suppose the question was not solve sine x is equal to 0 0.75, but the question was sine x is equal to k. Let me write it down, okay, on that one note so that, you know, even if you ask for notes, it's there clearly. So let's just quickly go back to that. 0 0.75 was just one particular example. Instead of solve 0 0.75, the question was solve sine x is equal to k. Now we don't know what a k is. Or to make the question even more interesting, how many solutions? How many solutions means how many times it intersects, right? So if the question was, what is the value of x where k has, you know, two solutions only? Two solutions only. What is the value of k? 
That's interesting. So we are going to use the same idea of the point of intersection. Remember that sine x is equal to 0 0.75. They've not told you k. They said, find the value of k where sine x is equal to k has exactly two solutions, not with the two solutions. Here's where the power of the slider comes in. So let me go back to that uh, graph of ours on our TI Inspire, wonderful TI Inspire. And what we're going to do right now is instead of this, I'm going to just go put k. I'll just go and put k. Now k is not any particular number. We want to find that k. So when I hit enter, automatically our TI Inspire says, create sliders for k. And you say, OK. And so you create. And there it has already created that slider. And let me just move that thing into this corner. So it says k is equal to 1. And it's giving me a range of values of k. All right? So I can just click outside it. And the slider is created. Now, when I move the slider, you can see that it's nicely jumping about here and there. Maybe it's not jumping the way you want it to jump. Jumping means sliding. So you can go on that slider, right click it, and say, OK, let's change the settings. The variable, you can call it k, you can call it p, you can call it whatever you want. Let's just keep it as k, all right? The value is the starting value, okay? Starting means, you know, when you see the graph, what is what is it that you'd see? I'll keep the starting value zero. The minimum value is the minimum value of k, from what value of k to what? So our graph was from between negative two and negative two. So let's keep it from negative two to negative two. So negative two to two, the y values. Step size, that's important. So in the step size, that's where you need to control that step size. I will keep it 0 0.25. Or you can keep it 0 0.2 if you want to. And then this is just a personal preferences here, okay? The display. I really like minimized. I don't know why. I'm very I'm a big fan of minimized sliders. And you'll you'll take you'll see this is just appearance, okay? Uh Dikhava, minimized. Okay. So now when I said, okay, look at how the slider looks like. I like this version of the slider. And this is the initial value. K is equal to zero. Can you see that? That's the line. Now, the minimized version means when I hit this side, it goes up. And when I hit this side, it goes down. And the increments are the, the step size, that 0 0.25 that I've put. Now it's well within my control. Okay, it's well within my control. And the question was, find the value of k where you have only two solutions. Now, look at k is equal to 0 0.5. The graph of sine is intersecting my y is equal to k at one, two, three, four, four different places. And if they said between 360 and 360, four different places. Then if I move it up, then again, four different places. Here, that is again, one, two, three, four, five. Five different places between negative 360 to 360. Four, four, that is four. That is two. Can you see that? That's one place. There's another place. That's one intersection. That's another intersection. Two different points. And you want to find what is the value of k? What is the value of k where the graph has two solutions? The k is one here. You know, the value of k is one. As it says here in the slider, k is equal to one. Now, when you lower it to the next possibility for k, that's another place where you have two solutions, exactly two solutions. Can you see that, everyone? This is how I encourage students to use a slider, OK? A very powerful technique to employ. Uh, and you can use it whether you are uh, in your paper two, uh, sorry, paper four or paper six. But this is one feature that I'm going to use today, uh, the slider technique. And it is also there uh, on all of your handles. You should practice this, I would definitely say. It's a lovely thing, OK? And you will see questions like this, you know, for what value of k, for what value k. There's a question that's just popped up. Let's just think. Anonymous, oh god, it must be the same. How do we show the working uh, for this on the paper? Just sketch it. Your working is your sketch. You know my rough sketch? Just sketch it. Just sketch the graph and put y is equal to k. Just sketch it and say, this is the value. What you see on your graphing calculator, just, you know, the, the, the sketch of it, just draw it on the paper. Your drawing is the working. Have I answered your question? So how can you, can you tell us, tell, can you tell how to add the slide again? Are you sure? One moment, one more. The slide is, okay, how to add the slide? Let's go back to that. Let's take another example. Let's take that, you know, that complicated example that I made up. Let's take that complicated. Shall we do that? Boys and girls, I'm glad you guys are asking questions. I like questions. Uh, so let me just add another graph page, okay? I'm going to add another graph page. This time I'm going to add that complicated example. See, you guys are asking me questions, so I'm taking the complicated example. But remember the first thing. First thing, I will always change the window settings. This time I'm going to use the different setting, okay? If you know the shortcuts, you can just go and you know change the settings here. So negative 316. So I'm going to the window there. And um, I don't know what this is going to be with the new graph, but let's just keep it as three. 
and uh, this I'll keep it as 316. Oh, that's not 316. It's 316, and let's bring that thing back to negative three. There we go. And I'll change this and just double click here. I'll make that 30. I like 30. You may like something else. You may like 45. Keep it to 45. Depends. Okay. All right. Let's look at that question again. What was it? Complicated question I made up. Uh, let's go to that one note. So the complicated question that I had made up was sine x minus two cos four x is equal to three. Let's call that k. We want to find, you know, let's keep the same thing, two solutions, okay? This equation is equal to k. How many, what is the value of k for two solutions? Sine x minus two cos four x. Let's enter that uh, sine x, sin, is it sine three x? Okay, sine three x minus two cos four x. Let's use that as the example. Okay, so I will write that as it is. Uh, the entry line, to get the entry line, just hit tab, you'll get that. And it was sine three x minus two cos four x. Sine three x minus two cos four x. Sine trig, sine three x minus two times. Be, be just safe, safe enough to put the times, okay? Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't show up, 4x. That was my function. Oh my God, look at that. Interesting, huh? Let's just change the color. So you can go ahead, change the color to something like some magenta, there you go. Interesting graph. That's why I said a little complicated. Now, oh God, there are too many solutions here. Now you want to enter the uh, K. How do you enter the K is uh, the slider. It's just another. It's just another equation. So that means you hit tab, you'll get the equation entry, and here you put k. Here you put k, and you automatically will the uh, the. Let's just enter another letter because you know it's using the k from the earlier page. Okay, so I'm going to enter another letter. Let me call it t, or s s for slider. S s for slider. You just enter the letter. The moment you say enter, it'll say create a slider. Should I create a slider for that? Because uh, the Calculate is asking. You hit OK, and automatically the slide is created. All right, I will change the color of the slider for me. Let me just check. Only the color of the slider so that it stands out. Let's see, it is, yeah, there you go. There you go. So the slider basically is another equation, and you can call it by any letter. The letter is like the variable, right? And then when you when you slide the values, oops, not the graph, the slide the values. Uh, let me change that uh, slider settings for you. Uh, so first, let me move the slider. I'll move the slider maybe here. Okay, I like I said, I, I like the slider to be the minimized version. So I'll say, you know, uh, S is good enough. I'll say minus two, two plus two, and no, value, value should be zero, sorry. That is a initial value that will display. So that's a negative two. And then we can put a plus two. This is where we need to be careful, okay? So you might want to keep changing this. So this time, let's make it 0.2 increments. Horizontal is good, good, good. Minimize, I like to show the minimize. And there you go. Is everyone happy how we got the slider? Whoever asked the questions, yeah? And that's how you work through the slider, okay? You can, you can move it around. And depending upon how many solutions, now you can see how many points is intersecting. Again, you need to keep in mind uh, what are the values of x we're looking at. Here, my values of x was negative 360 to 360. Suppose the question was find, find the value of k you know, uh, in the in the domain 30 to from zero to 360. So you're looking at only this this part of the graph. So here there are solutions of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight values. So if your question was, I want only two solutions between three six zero and 360, oh, it's not going up. That means I need to change the slider up there. Can you see that it has to move up right now? It's it's stopping at s equal to two. So I need to make this slide. Here it's four solutions. I need to go up right up to there to get four solutions, uh, two solutions only. Is everyone understanding how it's going on? So the slider right now, the max value of the slider is two, which is why it's not going up. So if you change that setting to go to, let's say three, maximum value three, oopsie, three. And now you come back to your graph and now it'll go up. See that, see that, see that, there. So from zero to 360, there are two solutions. Although uh, here from negative 360, it will be more than that, okay? so. I think it still needs to be a little bit more perfect. Yeah, that value it needs still a bit more perfection. It's not quite 2.8. It should be maybe 2.4 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, you got to adjust the increments and then you'll get the thing right. But my point was to show you how to use a slider. Have I answered the question to everyone who was asking what, can you show us how to use a slider again? 
it's entering another equation and uh, with that variable. Is that okay, boys and girls? Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. So if that was a little too fast for you, I want you all to use your calculators and use a slider for this question. Okay, this is one of the tools, right? So use your slider uh, option for this question. The question says, um, uh, not this question, this doesn't have a slider option. Let's solve this question. This is, look at this question. This is a slider option. Okay, so the equation is given. Sketch the graph. That means we need to plot the graph on the calculator. So each of you boys and girls, first plot the graph. Okay, negative 60, cos 4x plus 1. And look at the value they have given. Between 0 and 180 is where you want the solution. Huh? Solution should be only between 0 and 180. And then they said, write down the possible values of k. They have also asked for k. If the equation fx is equal to k has exactly two solutions exactly three solutions, exactly four, or no solution. No solution means no point of intersection. So what is the value of k? So that there should be no solution or no point of intersection, exactly four solutions, exactly three solutions, or exactly what should be the value? Try it out, come on, try it out. I'll give you a couple of minutes, try it out. And then I'll also do it, okay? So this is a question given to you, okay? Like, you know, and, but remember they have asked for the domain between zero and 180, and you're using the sl same slider option. Okay, go for it, practice. Practice means practice, huh? Meanwhile, I'm also drawing the graph here, but I don't want you to copy. So that you can check your work. Questions in front of you, negative 60, cos 4x plus 80. I think the first thing, okay, I'll come to that later on. Somebody has asked something. Anyone done with the graph? Good question, Hassan. If anyone has done with the graph, here's what the graph should look like. I think it's a quite a challenge to get these points right. Okay. Uh, of course, it's a translated graph. There's a plus 80 should tell you that, you know, the, the graph has shifted by 80. So obviously you need to, Try and adjust where it will be. Uh, the more you play around with the TI, uh, you will get to know how to get this thing. Our objective today is to see the, tri uh, the sliders and then quickly jump to a paper six question. Uh, so I'm just going to add the slider now. Okay, I'm going to put the K and it's going to ask me the K. Uh, and there's my K. So I'm going to move that thing away. Uh, and the first thing, like I said, I'm just going to make this settings. So I'll go to the settings. And the K is fine, value of K. I need to be careful what values of K I'm using. 
because it has to match with this. So let me just take a look at it. Okay, my K values can range from, what is that? Whatever that is. That's good. If you want to know what that value is, you know, you can obviously use the other features, the graph trace uh, and figure out, okay, the minimum value is going somewhere from negative, from a 21, okay? That's uh, the minimum value of the graph. Uh, what's going on? Okay. One sec, let me just trace again. Uh, trace, trace, yeah. Okay, the trace, so that's like a 20, something like a minimum is 20, and the max value, about the video children, the settings are, or the trace is probably too low. Let's just go and change the settings of the trace, trace step. Um, well, let's just, let's take a look at the max directly. The maximum value of this graph, uh, yeah, it's uh, 140 is the maximum value and that's 20. So that should give you an idea of what the K should be. Okay, so if you're looking at the K values, you can keep it between the max and the minimum value, right? So that's one way to identify what the mix, uh, minimum and the maximum value is. I did the graph, but I cannot, I can get how to do the slider. I can't get the slider. Did you understand now, uh, Ruhan? It's it's entering another ta function. Y is equal to, you know, you just put K and then you adjust the values of K from the minimum and the maximum of the Rohan, did you, are you with me? Like you enter another, uh, the entry line and just have to type in K. All right, cool. So I'll just change the settings now. I just did this thing to help you see how to adjust the values of uh, K, uh, minimum and the maximum. The value of K, between, uh, let's just keep it as 50. And the minimum value I wanted as 20. Uh, let's make it uh, whatever, you know, 18 maybe so that it goes a little beyond that. Maximum value I wanted at 140, I'll keep it at 150. And the step size, this is where we got to be careful. The step size, let me keep it at, um, what should I say? Let's see 25, okay? Let's work on, start, keep that in mind. And I'll keep it minimized. So it's going to jump with 25. The step size missed 25. So. Right now, K is at 50. Can you see that K is equal to 50? The question was, you know, what are the values of K so that they'll have exactly, uh, I think one, two, three, four, whatever. how many solutions do you see? You see one, two, three, four. Remember the domain is from zero to 180, okay? In that domain only. So one, two, three, four, K is equal to 50 works fine, right? Four solutions. Okay, so you can see four intersection points. One, two, you're not asked what is the solution? You're saying what's the value of K? What is the value of K where the graph has four solutions? So those are the four points, okay, uh, of intersection and K is 50 is good enough. And the moment you keep going up, there are still four solutions. So basically in this case, you have to give it a range. K, it's not just 50, but K from 50. Where is, you can give a range of values of K. So here at this point, you have how many points? One, two, three, four, all right, four solutions. It's not going any lower than that. So I'll, I'll need to adjust that one also. Uh, but let's bring it up Four. that's again four solutions. And uh, at that point, 140, you have two solutions. So the minimum point, let me just adjust my K quickly, all right? The minimum point is uh, 20, I believe. And I think I'll need to just adjust the, the step size maybe. All right, let's just keep it one. Might be a little slow, but fairly big thing. So, um, there you go. See, at the maximum value of two solutions, can you see that? K is equal to 141, two solutions, okay? Uh, I think 140 is the two solutions, not 140 is two, so one point of intersection, second point of intersection. The same way if you keep going down, anything anything more than, anything less than 140, you'll have four solutions. Four solutions, can you see that? Four solutions, all the way to the minimum point. Even the minimum point is four solutions. So when I go back to my question, when I go back to my question where it says two solutions, I think it says, you know, exactly two solutions is at K is equal to 140. Three solutions, is there a place K is equal to three, three solutions? Is there a place that K has three solutions or three points of intersection in the graph? One, two, three, four, there'll always be, there'll be no value of K that's three solutions, right? 
from 0 to 180 in this domain. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, nay. You'll not have three solutions. There's no value of k value of three solutions. You'll have four solutions definitely all the way from the minimum point till the maximum, not including the maximum point. Okay, so in between all those values of k, acceptable, acceptable for three solutions. And the last part of the question was, I think, uh, one solution or no solutions? No solutions. Okay, no solutions. In that domain, in that domain, you'll not have any value of k that has no solution. That means no point of intersection. Control menu. Okay, that's what's asked. <clears throat> I think I think we have uh, we've done enough for this uh, slider. Let's just take a look at that question. One question from paper six, and use these ideas there. Some of these will be easier because it's probably a recap of uh, what you have done earlier on. But some, as you keep going on, <coughs> you can use the key, the option of the key. All right, you can use the option of the key uh, as we do that. So uh, I'm keeping an eye on the time, also, boys and girls. Uh, I just don't want to go fast, but at the same time, I want to show some of the key features and how it can be used. It's also a trick graph, as you can see, it's paper six. So let's try and solve these questions. Like I said, some of them will be a lot easier uh, without the slider, but I thought we'll use the slider because it's a useful tool for, for uh, you know these kind of questions where you're to find solutions and not necessarily simpler trig ones, but a little bit more complicated. Here's the question. This is paper six. Here is a graph of x is equal to uh, y is equal to sine x degrees. The period is 360. Period is 360. As you can see, one complete sine wave. It says on the grid below, sketch the graph of y is equal to sine 3x. You're allowed to use the calculator, by the way. You're allowed to use the calculator for paper six. So you can actually sketch it on the calculator and you know copy the sketch here. For those of you who know how to sketch, that's 3x, right? Between 0 and 360, you should get three sine waves, right? You should get three complete sine waves. So 360 divided by three would give you the period, which is the first uh, option the first question uh, one part a part two okay so let me just open up my ipad which has gone to sleep right now uh, so this is let me go to uh, yeah okay so 360 and if you notice uh, it's 3x that was my b that was the b meaning that is what we identified as the frequency so between 360, if you divide it into uh, three parts, it should be 120, okay? <clears throat> and 120 divided by two is uh, 60. So your graph should be like that. That's one graph. So in the same way, actually it should turn around. Be careful huh, how you draw. Should the maximum should be at one. Okay, same angle take here. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, so just make a nice sketch and you know you should get three. <clears throat> okay, and the max of the bin, be careful on that. And when you look at the graph, you can see that the period, period is one complete cycle. One complete cycle means one complete crest and one complete trough, that's 120. Or you can simply look at the total period, which is 360 and divided by three. In this case, that is the B. Remember the B was three, okay? 360 divided by three is 120. That's, I'm just looking at the simpler answers first as we move on. The second says, uh, write down the period of the graph 10x. So, you know, this is like investigation. So if it was B, then you know 360 divided by B. In this case, the B is 10. So 360 divided by 10 would be just 36. That's a period. Write down an expression in terms of B for the period of the sine wave. Again, they just said that. So that's, you can write down as 360 divided by B. Okay. Uh, the first part of any uh, paper six question is going to be easy. Okay, so this is just one first part. Okay, this is not question number one, first part. The entire thing is one question modeling. All right, so first part is going to be very simple. The second part, let's look at it. The graph below shows the approximate height of uh, the tide at Auckland, New Zealand, during 25th of April 20, uh, 2014. T is the time in, uh, of the day starting at midnight. H is the height. So along the y axis, you have the height and uh, uh, about a fixed height, all right? So 24 hours from midnight, okay? That's the period. So what is the period? Can anyone tell me from what we've done? What is the period? So one complete sine wave, no? one complete crest, that's a crest. So the period is actually from here all the way to here. If you look at it, at 12, the period of this sine wave, complete sine wave is 12, okay? If you are 
<clears throat> specific about the units, it's 12 hours. Each one is measured in terms of hours. Yeah, thank you, Rohan. 12 hours. <clears throat> Explain why a model for the height of the tide wave 25 uh, April, uh, 25th of April is H is equal to 1.2. Uh, now you got to write, remember, I think last time you, we were talking about the communication part. You got to explain how the model is given by this uh, equation. For that, if you remember from last time, I said I need to find what is capital M, what is small m. Use your calculator, okay, if, you, if you're not sure about that. But in this case, if you look at, uh, let me zoom in, okay, uh, the, the maximum is 1.25. And the minimum, 1.2, sorry, and the minimum is 1.2. Okay, so let me just draw that also for you. That's a 1.2, that's also 1.2. So you can identify that, okay? That's a negative 1.2, it can be clear. And the A amplitude, this is for those of you who are not here last time, a little re review from there, it's basically 1.2 minus of minus 1.2 over two. That is why I said, you know, for those of you who don't, know what I'm doing, the last part times notes might be helpful. And this works out to 1.2. Now that takes care of that A. The B is 30. The B is 30, it says. So how do we take a look at that uh, 30? Uh, so what we do is that B is actually uh, the period. Remember I said the B is 360 divided by the period. Okay, the period in the question above is 12. It is 360 divided by 12, which happens to be 30. Okay, so those of you who were there last time, this was some of the notes we did. The B was a frequency, okay? Uh, and that was the relationship. So with that, you can justify and say that the, the height is basically the amplitude, which is 1.2 times sine of the period. And because it's in terms of T, we can write it in terms of T. So you got to just communicate that very clearly. And here's the next part. They said, usually the height of the tide is measured with capital H uh, meters above sea level. All right, so there is a new graph. As you can see, the starting point is two here. So we're starting at zero here, that's the difference now. Okay, so there's a slight difference, slight shift, like a vertical shift. And they've asked you, what is that vertical shift? I think they've said, mod five part B. And like, again, you know, last time we saw the vertical shift was the D that horizontal line. So if you can draw the vertical line, uh, the horizontal shift, that's at two, okay? That means the graph above is shifted by two or gone up by two. You can write capital H as 1.2 sine of 30 T plus two. Everyone who was here last time, this is all last time's notes, if you recall. If you recall last time we did the whole thing, how to find A, B, and today you're actually seeing, oh yes, Whatever we did last time is in paper six. Can you see that? All the application is paper. I said that, but we did not have so much time last time to manipulate all that. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, this was last time's notes. We were identifying A, B, C, D, the vertical shift and all those things, okay? We went to the characteristics very clearly. We looked at you know, the whole thing. And today, in fact, you're actually seeing, oh yeah, that made sense. You know, Where did all that come from? It's all that application of that thing which comes in paper six. Let's move on. It says the boat best fishing conditions, sorry. <clears throat> the best fishing conditions are when the height of the tide is less than one meter above sea level. Less than one meter. This is the graph for one meter. This is the graph of sea level, height of the tide above sea level, H meters. The question says, best fishing conditions are when the height of the tide is less than one meter above sea level. Use your calculator with your model to find the two times with, between which that there are uh, well, between which the best fishing conditions on the morning of uh, 25th of April. Now, if you're not able to see it, this is the same case of my slider. This is the case of my slider. I could use a slider or what I prompted earlier on. It says that the best fishing conditions are when the height of the tide is less than one meter. You're given the value of K. You're given the value of K. You're given K ko now one banao, one meter. And find out for me the best fishing conditions or the timing when I can fish. Use your times correct to the nearest minute. This is why I wanted to introduce you to slider and see how in paper six you can use that conditions. They have given you the value for this value. How can I find out the other, you know, the timings? Okay, so this is the question in context. Like, how would you use it? So let's use this question right now with this value of K and find out 
what is the best timing to fish according to these conditions. So this is our model, 1.2 sine 30t plus 2. If you have your calculator, you can go ahead and do it and plot another line called y is equal to 1. Don't put k is equal to 1, no? the value of k is 1. y is equal to 1 and find at the point of intersection. Give your time to the nearest minute it says, okay? Because this is hours, all right? One, two, three, this is hours, okay? So they said nearest minute is what they're looking at. So let's go back to our calculator, okay? I'm going to go to the calculator and I'm going to share the calculator screen. And because it's a new problem, I'm just going to add a new problem so that it doesn't interfere with uh, the earlier ones. And here I've got, uh, I'm going to adjust this window settings. Always, boys and girls, remember window settings, you just adjust that, okay? Otherwise, we get messed up, okay? So the window settings in my graph from 0 to 24 on the x-axis and from 0 to 4 on the y-axis, 0 to 24, and the increments can be 1. Um, 0 to 24 and 0 to 4, okay? Let me recall that. So I'll just make that 0 to 24, 0, and that will be 4. And the cell keep it as 24, and the cell keep it as 0. That is how the graph was given. That's one increment is good enough. This is good enough. <clears throat> and I'll type in my uh, graph as 1.2 times it was a sign of a 30 T. We'll write it as X because our graph is in terms of X, okay? Plus a 2. That's our graph, as you all can see. That's our graph. <clears throat> And they said it should be less than one. This is the height, huh? the graph gives us the height of the tide. And they said best conditions for fishing is less than one meter. So let's just put that second entry line. Don't put K now, don't put K now, put one, okay? This question, because I've read the question, I know that they don't go for another value of K. But if, you, if they had asked for different values, you could put different values, okay? Uh, you can put one and there you go. You got, and the solution we are looking for is what are the timing? So anything below that is the best condition to fish. All right, they're saying, let's find out that by using the uh, uh, intersection. I'll use the geometry option, the intersection points, and I'll find the point of intersection of the two graphs. And there you got the values, the points of intersection. Can you see that? Can you see that? Those are the four points of intersection. They've given us in a context, okay? So for me, it's the same idea. They've given you the two values. Remember, T is hours, huh? It's 22.1 hours, it's 19.9 .9 hours, it's 7.88 hours, it's 10.1 hours. They've said to the nearest minute or something like that, they said in the question. So <clears throat> if everyone is okay with that, at Y equals one, that's the value, 7.88, 10.1. I'm just going to switch back to the answers that I have, all right? 7.88 to 10.1. So go back to that and say, the question says, um, it says morning. So it's not the second set, it says morning. So read your questions carefully, right? So it says, using your calculator with the model age, find the two timings between which there were best fishing conditions on the morning. Give your times correct to the nearest minute. So I'm just going to write down the way we saw it, the way we saw it on our, uh, Calculator. So the the points One of intersection. Sorry, my city is on. I don't know why to shut up. So the point of intersection was uh, seven point eight eight comma one, and the next point of intersection. One sec. Let me just look at my calculator quickly. Was ten point one. Now this is the morning hour. Morning hour. Matlab saat seven point eight eight hours to ten point one hours. Now you can't use, you want the nearest minute, right? So you need to convert 0.88 hours to minutes. You need to convert 0.1 hours to minutes, okay? And that's the conversion. So you can convert that again, going back to our calculator, I'll do that quickly for you. Uh, let me just add a calculator page, 0.88. Times is 60. And to the nearest minute is 53, and then 0.1 times is 60. To the nearest minute 
is a six. So what I'm going to write down is like this. I'm going to write down the answer as seven uh, fifty-three a.m. to ten uh, oh six a.m. Can you see that? Can you see that? It says the morning in the morning. So I'm using the same idea as the slider, which means in this particular question, they gave us the value. Okay. Suppose they asked, you know, they asked you the further value of k, like the two different kinds of questions we saw earlier on when we were using this slider tool. Then obviously, you know, you'll change according. They'll say that, okay, when is, you know, for what values will you get, you know, more, more number of times of fishing. So it's the same idea of using the points of intersection. The slider is actually an equation. You're entering it as an equation, but you're getting a generic equation, like in terms of k. I think the rest of the questions, I'll share these questions. You could do the same thing using, using the part to write down the best times, uh, which are the best times in the afternoon. That means the second, second that is the evening time. So uh, because you know that the period is 12 hours, right? It says period is 12. Now we started the questions 12. Uh, period, you know, sine and cosine are periodic. That means if, if the best fishing time was between 7 to 10, guess what? 12 hours from now, it will be the second best fishing time. That's how periodic things behave, okay, cyclic. But here comes the third part of the question, which says a different model. Now that is not even, that is not even sign. Look at it, it's a cubic function, a different model for the same tide, different model, same sine height. You know, that was a sinusoidal model, sinusoidal model using the sine wave. But now they said a different model using a cubic polynomial is given here. Compare. D with H from the question C by drawing the graphs on your calculator for T zero to 12. Comment on how the difference in height between D and H varies. What a beautiful question. What a beautiful question. You know, they have said the same thing, the same phenomenon called the height of the tide. You know, this, this question starts off saying the height of the tide, right? Look at this, the height. They have said it is given by the sign, which we said, you know, that's what the side height came to be. But now they've said another model is this cubic model. They've asked you to, to compare the difference in the height. Let's do this. Okay, but remember they've said between zero to 12, zero to 12. So I'm going to do that for you. Uh, it's so, far, so far so good, everyone. I mean, I, and, and I hope I can take a little five minutes extra because I would like to complete this, at least this third part. I think there's a fourth part. Can I do that? Yeah, can I take yes, sir, you can take. Yeah, yes, sir, you can take. Yeah, because it's a very interesting and an important aspect. That's the only thing. Okay, so uh, so this is a second model and we're looking at a cubic model and you're trying to compare the two models, okay? And it's between zero to, uh, zero to 12, all right? So I'm going to go back to my calculator and uh, here's the calculator. As you can see, I was converting from... Uh, hours to minutes, you know, uh, and that's the model that we have. This is my original sign, okay? And boys and girls, when you're doing this, you know, there are different ways to use. If you don't, if you know what it is, if you want to just hide this, if it's interfering, you know, be on your, be on your best alert, know all the features. You can just right click and say hide. I mean, you know what it is, right? So you can hide now because you want to have another graph, it might interfere. So just right click on it and say hide. Likewise, you don't know this question, right? I mean, now you don't want this part. So if you want, you can hide it. You can right click on that and hide this feature. So, you know, it might just seem like a clutter, but these are small things at the time of the exam. Even this thing, you know, let's just hide it away. Hide it away. So that it doesn't get messy and, you know, you know how, how well you're using the calculator. So here we got, I don't think even we need this part now because you're comparing something. So you can even hide this part away. All right, so I, I've hidden everything. I just have this one. I'm going to, I'm going to plot that uh, cubic uh, model Okay, for that, I'm going to be careful because they said they wanted only wanted zero to 12. This is zero to 24, by the way. So I'm going to hit this entry line. Tab gives me that. And the model given to me was 0.022 T cube. All right, so it is 0.022. Be careful, just put that point uh, multiplication sign uh, always on the, uh, um, to be on the safe side. X is what I'm using, not T, X. And to get the cube, I'll get this thing, I'll put cube. And then it is minus 0 0.403. And there's a t square. So I'm going to multiply that by instead of t, we're using x. So that's x square. And then there is a negative plus 1.9 t. So plus 1.9.
you can put it times or you can just go with that. And now I'm going to put a condition. Well, all of you who are there, you know where the condition line is control equal to give you all the, that's the condition bar. Okay, and I'm going to plot the graph only from zero to 12. So zero, so zero strictly less than, x strictly less than um, 12. And let me hit enter. And there you see, they have drawn a black color. Black is a beautiful color, nothing wrong with the black color, but so that it uh, stands out in our lesson Let's make it something green. Okay, there you go. There you got the graph. I'm, I, I, I hope you all can see, we've plot the graph only for that domain value zero to 12, okay? And uh, for the sake of convenience, let's just hide this. And let's go back to the question and say, what do they want us to do with this graph? Okay, so I'm just going to go back to our question. In that question, they said, uh, here's another model, we've plotted that, okay? Compare D, that means compare the cubic model, with H, that was the sine model, by drawing the graphs on your calculator, if you did that, comment on the difference in height. Comment on the difference in height. So you want the difference in height, not the height, sir. Difference in height uh, between D and H, uh, how the difference in height varies with time. How the difference in height varies with time. So you want the height, right? So let's go back to that graph of ours. Let's go back to the height of uh, graph of us. Now you want to what's the maximum value here, the minimum that's giving the height, right? The maximum, but only in that range from zero to uh, 12. So let's look at the maximum value. Everyone by now should know how to find the maximum value of each graph. Since there are two graphs, the calculator is going to ask which graph are you looking at? So go back and say blue graph, and then you can identify what that maximum height is according to the blue graph at 3.2, that's the timer, 3.2 is hours. So you might want to convert that into minutes like as we did earlier on. So the maximum height is occurring at 3.2 hours. For the green graph, let's go back and do the same thing. Analyze that graph, maximum height of the graph, the green graph, and look at that. Oh, the maximum thing here is 3.1, uh, sorry, 3.19 is hours. T is you know, X axis, then Y axis. So the maximum height is 3.2 and the maximum height is 2.67 for the green, okay? So obviously you can say, according to the second model, the maximum height is just 2.67. Whereas according to the first model, the maximum height is 3.2. And look at the time difference. This is occurring at three hours, at three o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m. And this is happening at 3.19. What is 0.19? Let's just check that 0.19, 0 0.19 hours times 60, remember, let's take it to the nearest minute, hit control enter to be on the safe side. So it's occurring at uh, 11 minutes after three. So 3 minute in the middle of the, in the morning, early morning, 3 bach ke 11 a.m., you're seeing a maximum height of 2.67. That is what you're supposed to write. At 3 a.m., according to the first model, the maximum height is 3.2 meters above sea level. And uh, at 3, 11 a.m., you know, so 11 minutes after, there is a difference in 11 minutes, you know, where you see the maximum amount. And that, that's 2.67, okay? So when you go back to your question paper, when they said, comment on how the difference in height between D and H varies with time. The time difference is 11 minutes. You got to talk about the time difference, okay? Even there's a height difference of whatever, one was three, uh, and one was 2.6, you can write down that part, okay? Uh, for lack of time, I, I, I thought I'll just skip the writing. I'll write it down and if you want, I can share the thing, I'll write down the answer, but at least I explained it. But I just want to emphasize one thing, bear with me boys and girls, just one thing, okay? Make one change, look at that question. This is what I love and you can use, this is where the calculator comes in, all right? Make one change. This is the most beautiful part of the question. I know we'll not have time for four, but I'll leave it as an exercise for you guys, okay? And this is past paper question. You can take a look at it later on, but this is probably the most beautiful part of the question. It says, make one small change, one change to D. What is D? D is the cubic model. Make one small change to D that makes the graph of D very close to the graph of H. Four values from three to nine. I love this question. Make one small. You can see that they are so different graphs. 
This, they, they saw different graphs. Make one small change. What is that change that you will do that will make it close? You know, we talked about the height being changed, like that's 3.2 and this is 2.6. Make one small change. And by right now, this graph is from 0 to 12. They wanted between three and between three. Between three, that is, you know, that's the third hour, no? From three, x is equal to three or t is equal to three to nine. I think that's what they're looking at. How will it change? What is that one small change you will do? Now, if you didn't have a calculator that is as friendly as a TI Inspire, you will spend a lot of time in your exams. Remember, they have told you 45 minutes me karna hai. This is the beauty of paper six. There is no set way to approach this kind of question. Okay, you can play with the graphs, but I really, really, this is where I appreciate this graph. And this is where I think uh, those of you who have uh, the TI Inspire, play with your calculator, get to know your features, get to know a slider. The slider is a great feature. In the same way, how will I just be so that it comes close enough to, you know, as close enough to this thing? My answer to that question is, remember they, they have, meaning, meaning the question, let's go back to that question. The question is actually saying, you know, make one change. You need to write down the change. You need to write down the change that you're going to bring into this equation, to this equation. Now, anyone who's listening, watching for so long, being quiet, can anyone tell me what can I change? What can I change? What should the change be? Suggest, chalo. What is the difference in height? Tell me. It's 3.2, 2.6, right? What is the difference? 0.6? Yeah? Okay. Shall we just add a 0.6 and see what happens? Somebody wrote something. Let me just check, check the height. Uh, you can raise your hand. Okay. It's just a difference in 0.6, right? So let's go to the green graph. That's the green graph and add a 0.6. Can you see what I just, I've, I've gone to that. I just add a, added a 0.6. Let me just see what happens. See the difference in that. Let's just see. Everyone ready? Watch. Whoa. That's a little too much. Is that right? Let's just add a 0.5. Okay, go back to the graph. Let's go to that thing. Uh, instead of a 0.6, let's just make it a 0.5. Let's see what happens. That's better. That's better. Isn't it pretty cool? That's better. So your answer, when you're writing your answer in this question, to this question says, make that one change. What would be that one change? Now, you know, your IGCC is not so strict, but they are only looking for whether you understand what's going on. So that one change to that graph would be 0 0.022 T cubed uh, minus 0 0.4 or oh, 3t square plus 1.9t, all that remains the same. I'm just going to add a 0 0.5. Now, the IGCC exam, they will only see whether you can understand that you're making a change that is the difference in the height, you know, what you explained here in the earlier part of the question, the difference in the height. That's the thing that's come out. My uh, iPad is not thinking, oh, there it's something, okay? The difference in the height is what you need to add and it will match. I think we had seen a lot today. I will just uh, quickly recap and then I'll give you some time for questions, okay? I don't like to go over. So I'll quickly recap what we saw today. We said, hey, today we are going to look at sliders and then we look at paper six, all right? And then I said, everything that we do today is kind of a continuation with what we did last time. So I went back and I showed you something to do with sliders in this question. And where did we do that? Where should I do that? I'm sorry, I got a little knocked off. Uh, my internet, oh. my Wi-Fi went off. I'm sorry. Did you, could you guys hear what I was saying? Yeah, yes, sir. We can hear you. You could hear. I'm so sorry. My internet my, must have uh, dropped off uh, accidentally, but thankfully it came. I was just uh, summarizing. Okay, I was just quickly summarizing. I'm done. And then I explained how K can be used here. And then finally, we looked at this question, a beautiful question, how uh, we can use, uh, I mean, even the, 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 the ideas of ABCD that we used last time. 
but most importantly, how you can come with this idea of K. You know, I said, you know, in this particular question you're given, but it's the same logic K is equal to one, and then you can find the intersection points. But I thought I'll extend it to the question number three. And you know, they've given a model, another model, a non-sign model, and how you adjust that. I'll stop here to take some questions and then we can do the quiz. All right. Uh, any questions, boys and girls? Any questions? We'll stop here. Sir, could you please tell me from where you get these past papers? Uh, there are uh, several uh, websites. There's one uh, exam mate. I'll just pop, type it down on this. Uh, I can, I'll just put it on the panel. Maybe somebody can put it there. It's uh, www.exam-mate.com exammate.com. Uh, you can get a lot of uh, past papers, not just for IGCC, IB, everything. Uh, there is also, there are several, exammate is topical. You know, when exammate, you can go and, uh, it's a paid site, by the way, but if you go on something called extreme papers. These two websites have a lot of, I think extreme papers is free. Extreme papers is free, but exam mate, I think uh, the, the thing about exam mate is big, you can get topical questions. So you can type in you want about algebra and all the questions on algebra will pop up. But extreme papers, you get a full paper, you know? So you have to sort through the topical thing. Yeah, Any other questions, boys and girls? Yeah. All right. If there's no question, then uh, Hassan, I'll hand yeah, it yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, John sir, for having a wonderful session today. And uh, after the session, we will be going towards the quiz. So I want everyone to open, as you already know, joinmyquiz.com and enter the code P eight five nine four. Just go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the code 385942. So I'm waiting for the participants. As soon as I get the participants, I will open the, I'll start the quiz. If you have any problem while connecting to the quiz, kindly write it on the chat. Anyone having any problem? Or should I start? Yeah, just they are coming. So I think we should start the quiz. So I'm starting the quiz. If anyone wants to join, they can join in between as well.
good. Oh, one wrong. Easy one. Oh, so you have to go to the uh, graph page and graph both si uh, side of the equation. Hello. Guys, you can define these two functions and then you can find the value of f of g of five. It is a composite function. Let's see the results. Okay, majority of you have given the right answer.
this is from the transformation of the graphs translated left four and seven up Ten seconds. Good. All done. Let's see the results. Oh, the first one. You can see the graph on the on the screen. Good. Easy one. Thirty seconds. I think most of you have answered correct. Yeah, good. One wrong. It's not vertical stretch. You can see it's just an image of the above red graph, the blue one. So it's a reflection. Okay, now you can use your calculator for this question to find the answer. It's a very basic question on rationalization. Thank you. 
30 seconds. Let's see the results. Whoa, good, excellent. Next question. Easy one. Just now, Johnson has told us. Let's see how many of you were attended the session. Oh, good. So it's amplitude, half the distance of the max, uh, difference between the maximum and minimum. So, yeah. Next. Very easy, very easy question. I just gave you this. Let's see. No answer till now. It's very easy. One answer. In the quadratic equation or a function, what does minus b by a represents? Is it product of roots, rate of change, sum of roots, common ratio? 20 seconds. Fifteen. Time's up. Nine answers. Oh my God. So after 10 question, Vishuddh is on the top and then dot, dot, dot is on the second and Somerset is on the third. So I think Somerset is Vio. I think so. Next. So this is the calculator page question where you can use this equation to solve for x and we all know what function do we use while solving these kind of questions we can use graph page as well but that's not required here Thirty seconds, seven answers. Seventeen.
Time's up. Let's see the results. No change in the rankings. Oh, good. Seven has given the right answer. So you can use and solve feature of the calculator to find the solution or, or the value that satisfy X in this equation and solve. So here you have given two equations. You have to find the solution for these two equations. Sixty seconds. Twenty five, eight seconds. Time's up. Let's see the results. Again, no change in the leaderboard. No solutions for these equations. By the way, you can you can draw these equations in your relation as a relation graph on the calculator. And you can see whether they are intersecting, they are parallel, uh, they are coinciding. So maybe these two lines are the parallel lines. That's why they don't have any solution here. Next question. So here you have to make an equation and then find the solution.
times of seven answers. No change in a leaderboard. Good. Most of you have given the right answer. Next. In which of the following situation will it be necessary to use uh, the negative inside a bracket on TI Inspire? Choose all that apply. In which of the situations you can use this symbol? So you, here you can use, uh, you can choose multiple answers. Time's up, seven answers. Right. Another question, what is the value of the expression when A and B are given to you? All done. Let's see the leaderboard. Not much change. Yeah, one change is there. Adit Aroda came on fifth. Oh, started again. So next few questions. Two, three question more are left. How we can define a variable on a calculator page? Easy question. All must answer. Choose multiple answer if required. Eight answers. Yeah, you can use all the three options if you want to define any variable inside a calculator. You can use these three symbols and functions. What is the amplitude of the function? Easy. Very easy. Amplitude. Mm -hmm. 
Time's up. So I think all of you have given the right answer. I think you should. Yes. Next. So this is the second last question. What is the period? It's also an easy question. Fast guys, easy one. In the last session also, we have seen how to find the period. Ten seconds. You can guess. Four, three, two, one. Done. So we have a last question here, but but I want everyone to tell me whether you have installed the latest version of operating system or not on your handheld where you have got the functionality of Python introduced in your handheld. I just, everyone to uh, write in the chat whether you have downloaded the latest version or not. Just say yes or no. Okay, Daita, you have, good, very good. Others? No, but how to, yeah. That is why I asked you, Adit. I'll walk you through those who don't, do not have the latest version. I'll walk you through how you can download it. Using a spare version. Yeah, correct, we should. Only for CX2 models, we have released the latest version. Yes. Okay, so you have on your uh, computer software, that's good. So let's do the last question on the quiz and then we'll walk you through how you can download it on your handheld as well as on your software, the latest version. So here you have given a graph it's asking you which equation. Six seconds, five seconds. Time's up. So after the final results, the score leaderboard is here. Oh. oh. It's y equals to sine 3x. So now this is the end of the question. End of the quiz. You can see first, second, and third. Dot, dot, dot got the second prize. We show this first. Somerset is second. So, guys, Mr. John Paul, sir, was telling about these websites, exammade.com, where you can get all the past year papers of IGCSE Cambridge. 
Oh, okay, Vyom, yes, yes, Vyom. Yeah, so this is one exam mate. Another is extreme, this papers dot extreme paper dot RS. So here you can get all the IGCSE exam last year's paper. Okay, so with a code. So for international mathematics is 0607. So now I'll just walk you through how you can download the latest version of uh, the operating system. So you just need to go to education.ti.com. Here in the downloads, here in the downloads, you have TI Inspire CX update option. Okay. So you can just go to this downloads and this TI Inspire CX updates. Click this. It will open a new window for you. Here you can update all the three calculators with you. Or all the two calculators of TI Inspire CX. You can also update the CX model, uh, the old model to the latest operating system. Yes, it does not have the Python coding in it, but still some bugs are being removed and some up updates are there. Uh, you can see there are some updates for Innovator Hub programming menus, okay? So you can download those who have the older version of the calculator. They can also upgrade their operating system to 4.5. 5.2 and those who have the latest version or latest model of the uh, inspire series cx2 they can upgrade their operating system to 5.2 that is the newest operating system available right now so it has many features including the python coding for you now you have to click this upgrade now uh, button you just click this it will take you to the new window will ask you which calculator you are using. So if you are using CX2, is this for handheld or for the both? Both. Adit, this is for both. You can upgrade your handheld as well as the computer software uh, simultaneously from here. And if you have already uh, uh, given the license key to the previous uh, version of the software, you need, need not to give new key it will automatically takes that key and upgrades your uh, software. So no problem while updating software as well. No need to find another key for that. So yeah. So if you have your TI Inspire 6.2 with you or you are having a CAS as well, or yeah, there is one answer. Will the software version be available for the No, no, no. Older version of the handheld in future or have you stopped updating the older version? See, we are updating older version. We are updating the older version. You can see from here as well that it has get upgraded to 4.5.2. I don't uh, know whether in future we are giving the Python coding in older version of the calculator because those calculators are introduced in 2011. So you may need to upgrade it to 6.2 if you want to do Python coding. Yeah, but yes, in this software, in this software, you will get the Python coding if you upgrade. Okay, upgrade and you can choose uh, the calculator which you have in your hand. If you have 6.2, just click there. It will ask you what software do you use? If you are using the student software, most of the, most of the students are using CX student software. Some of you are also using the CAS student software as well. So if you are using the CAS model, if you are using a CAS model, you should have this CAS student software with you. So you can upgrade your CAS student software as well. But if you don't, just select CX student software. If you have that innovator hub with you, you just write it yes. If you don't, just click on no, I do not use DI innovator hub. Continue. Continue and in the new window, you'll get the download links. Okay, in the new window, you'll get the download link. So first link is your uh, up, uh, update for handheld. Okay, the first link is, is, is for your handheld. So if you download this, let me just download it. So here in the bottom left, you can see my new version or new file, new update file has been downloaded. So 
you can upgrade via via using your software okay in next line you can see the ti inspire cx student software so below here you can get two links one is for your apple and one is for your window so you can download either of it as per your the uh, laptop's configuration so you can download the latest student software as well from here so this is the uh, walk through walk uh, through to do how you can download the upgrades so if you forget how to download you just go to numerical you can always go to numerical analytics com website under news and resource you'll get the blog and under blog you can see there are there is one blog how to download latest operating system in ti inspire 62 there is one another blog where students usually stuck okay sometimes what happen you uh, went into a press to test mode nowadays students what they are doing they are uh, going inside a press to test mode by themselves and they do not have another calculator or a teachers uh, software to exit from a press to test mode but there is a shortcut there is a shortcut for disabling the press to test mode using student software many student does not know about this the, uh, how they can exit the press to test mode using student software itself and they uh, uh, go to their teachers and uh, their friends that how we can uh, uh, disable the press to test mode but here i have one blog for you all you all of you you can share this blog with your friend as well that how you can disable press to test mode using student software okay so you can read this blog uh you just enter the press to test mode read this blog how you can exit it will make you uh, feel good that without uh, using the teachers help or another handheld you exited the press to test mode there is one question could you please send the link of how to disable press to test mode in chat yes definitely so let me just copy this and put the chat yeah so there is a link for how you can disable or you can exit from press to test mode so very easy three or four uh, steps there to exit from press to test mode okay so i think uh, this is enough for today we exceeded the time uh, no issues but uh, next week we are having a python coding uh, uh, session so please upgrade your handheld as well as the computer software okay so if you are using a better software upgrade it if you are using handheld upgrade it if you are using both upgrade both the uh, handheld as well as the software so thank you from my side thank you for joining Uh, i hope you enjoyed so bye bye